Welcome to a new video in my, I'm not even sure which series it's going to be. It's a, it's a bit of a DIY and also about some, you know, programming stuff. Because what I have done in the past couple of days is you can see that I have, you know, something big in here. So this is a big 2 times 32 amp motor controller. These are motors that are same as in my blue ride-on um, locomotive, the garden locomotive. But here I have my local remote module, which is being controlled by this phone. But now instead of controlling a small, you know, garden railway, it is actually controlling these big motors, which you can't see because it's too big, it's outside the frame, but you can probably hear that it's revving up. And this is all happening because, well, because a couple of things and, uh, uh, but for some reason that I'm going to explain in just a couple of minutes, I have retrofitted my local control to, you know, talk with these motor controller so I can, you know, wirelessly remote my ride on train. And that's the whole purpose of it. And this whole thing started probably, I don't know, probably about a couple of uh, months ago when I received an email uh, from from the I think it was a guy from the US and he was saying that uh, he have seen this YouTube video where somebody was using this saber tooth um, driver so this is the two times 32 that's the that's the model that I purchased so he used that to drive his locomotive and uh, this driver was created for robotics so it has a built-in microcontroller which is designed to receive signals from many different sources and one of the sources is just a simple RC. So he was using this RC remote to control the trains and well that got me thinking because I wanted to con convert my you know 4QD DNO to some sort of wireless control and uh, and I was also thinking I mean I had some mishaps with the 4QD so I also thought Maybe I can look somewhere else as a motor controller. So these two things started to click together. So I purchased this uh, a couple of months ago and it's been sitting on my shelf until about a week ago when I received a message from my local train museum and they said that they are going to have a you know special open day at the end of June. And uh, they asked me if I would like to you know take my train and, and have a ride. And I thought, well, definitely I would have, but that gave me the extra kick to actually start implementing the wireless control. And I thought that well, I might as well just look at this new motor controller to do the whole, you know, the heavy lifting of uh, controlling the motors. So as it turns out, well, I mean, I knew this before, but the Sabertooth controller pretty much does everything that I need. I mean, it has two, two separate output channels because as I said, it is designed to uh, control robots. So let's say the robot has two uh, drive wheels, then you know this would be able to control two motors uh, individually. So you can have these differential drive uh, where you know one uh, wheel turns forwards and the other one backwards, so the you know the robot can spin on its axis, or like how you drive a tank or skid steer. And so for that reason, it has two times thirty-two which could be a little bit overkill for my engine because I realized that my motors do actually, you know, consume 35 amps uh, when they are in the full, you know, the highest load, but that's basically two motors. So on one motor, that's probably about like, you know, 15, 16 amps, maybe 17, 18. So two times 32 should be more than enough for me uh, in retrospect, but I'm, I'm still happy that I picked this one because, well, at least I have some buffer uh, in case anything happens or if I choose to uh, take bigger motors. But also it has a USB control, which is mentioned somewhere here. Yes, this USB control. And all, it also has serial control. And that's what I actually ended up using here because um, now my ESP controller sends serial commands to this driver to actually drive the motors. And other than that, it has regenerative braking and it also has battery monitoring and probably a lot of other stuff that I'm not even using. And there is a lot of documentation on how you can use it in various scenarios and 
yeah, of course, the programming protocol and Arduino codes. So I use these Arduino codes and this USB protocol to talk to this device. And when you look at it, now you can see that uh, this is my same project that I've used for, you know, previously as my local remote. But now I'm, you know, controlling. I slightly modified the code to work with this controller. So if I do this, uh, let me do this side by side view. So you can see, well, actually you can't, but maybe I can move this a little bit down. Ugh. And if I start, uh, you can see, you can probably see the, the motor spinning. And at the moment I'm driving them from 12 volts. So this is like probably quarter or eighth of the speed that these motors can do because these motors are 24 volt motors. But other than that, the control is exactly the same as before. So I can still have this slider, I can, I can use the buttons, I still have forward and reverse, uh, I still have all the functionalities for you know sound and lights, which are not connected with this unit, but I've prototyped it with my original board and they were working. So if, I, if you see this, I still have the headers for the four outputs. So I'm definitely going to use this for headlights and the cab light. Uh, I'm probably not going to use the inputs at all for nothing. And I also have the sound module here. So um, I'm going to use it as, you know, a, a sound device as well. And that was the main reason why I choose to go with this one, because even the 4QD can receive RC uh, control messages, but then you know, that would be able to control the throttle and the direction. So I still need a way to, uh, you know, switch lights and activate sounds. So if I go with a regular RC, then I would need, you know, like sort of second solution to do that. And since I've done this local remote for my, you know, smaller gauge railways, I thought, well, that has all the function that I need. So I might just reuse it. And because I'm you know, implemented this USB control. I've also uh, implemented some of the sort of like the communication features. So the voltage reading is actually coming from the Sabre through controller. And uh, as you can see here, I'm also getting stat statistics on what is the current draw on each of the motors. Don't ask me why they are, these values are jumping up and down, but this is what I'm receiving from the device. And there are also uh, two different well, separate temperature boards or the M1 and the M2, probably, you know, MOSFETs. So I can even read, you know, the temperatures. So one of them is 26 and the other one is 27 degrees. So I think that would be also quite useful just to have an understanding of how hot it gets inside a loco. Because I can just assume that there is a sufficient air circulation, but maybe I'm wrong. So this is where I am at the moment. And of course, if I want to control my, you know, proper ride on loco, I don't want to, I don't want to control it from my phone. So the idea, well, the, the goal is, it's that this controller here is, I consider this pretty much complete now. Uh, I think what I need to implement here in the code is I need to implement some sort of dead man switch. Uh, but what I, the other thing I want to do is I want to build a separate controller, so physical controller, not a smartphone. So something that looks like a, you know, ride on railway controller with a throttle knob and a couple of buttons, and that would have a second ESP, which talks to this ESP. And I've already started implementing the communication protocol. Um, so my idea is that the two devices are going to communicate with, with each other using UDP packages. So the controller is just going to, you know, keep sending UDP packages probably every 250 milliseconds uh, to, the, the, to the controller or this receiver. And uh, in that way, if that stream of packages stops, that I can consider that as a trigger for a dead man switch. So I think that's what I'm going to do that, you know, maybe if there is no packets received for for a second or I don't know, maybe two seconds. So let's say if the if the uh, the remote is out of range or it stops for any reason, then I can just, um, you know, issue an emergency. Well, probably not an emergency stop, but uh, break the local to a full stop. And um, 
yeah, the reason I wrote it node red because this is where I tested the UDP protocol. So I can send the UDP message from here to spin up the speed. And you can see on the Wi-Fi as well that the speed, speed goes up. And I can also do the stop. I can turn on the lights as well. So it, it, I've, I've used a very, very simple protocol, which um, I'm just basically going to send a couple of bytes every time. I think, well, the first one is going to be direction. The second one is going to be speed. And then uh, I had provisioned three other bytes. Probably I'm only going to use just one. And then on that one single byte, I'm just going to big bang it to indicate the three lights and probably the other five I can use for sound. So basically just sending three bytes uh, packets, I can just uh, describe the whole control of the locomotive. And also the this uh, receiver or controller sends messages back. And those are the, you know, the battery and the amp reading and the temperature. So on the remote, I can have a small screen, probably like a really, really small LED screen. Uh, sorry, OLED screen. So if I really want, I can just remotely monitor the temperature. So sometimes that I might just do like every, every so often uh, just to make sure that everything is right. So communication is done. Everything is, you know, starting to take shape. Of course, the big hurdle, the next big uh, thing is going to be the, you know, the building the controller. Uh, and it's not difficult. I think it's just going to take time because, yeah, it's going to be a new stuff. Probably I would, the throttle is going to be a rotary encoder. And, you know, I'll probably have a, need a keypad for activating the lights and the different sounds. And as I said, a screen, something like that, probably a custom PCB as well. And I, and I have about a month, maybe a month and a half to get it completed. I would say probably a month to complete it and then have a couple of weeks of testing and then, you know, or ironing out some thieving issues. And uh, that's it. And the other thing I also want to do with the, the, the controller or the software itself is uh, actually I got in contact with Chris, who is uh, um, owning this site or this product, the local remote which is what my you know, project is based upon. So he's also using an ESP. He's using an ESP8266, not an ESP32. And um, um, I mean, we had a little bit of chat and then he just asked me if I can you know, use a different name, which I think it also well, makes sense because he's used local remote for quite a long time and he built up a sort of like a reputation and community behind it. And I still haven't decided what to use mine uh, because you know, loco, well, it is for trains, so it has to have loco. And I thought about uh, mixing in pilot, like how Ezu uses the lock pilot, but then just the pilot itself could be misleading, as it, uh, you might think that it's for planes. Uh, and I also want to include Wi Fi because that's how it is different from other, um, you know, remotes, which are probably on RC. So I'm thinking maybe like Wi-Fi lock remote. So instead of local, maybe just use LOK remote. It's going to be fairly similar, but still different. Um, I haven't decided yet. If you have some ideas, just leave it in the comment section below. So I'm, I'm quite happy with it. I'm, I'm, I'm also happy with the fact that I think I started modifying the code and the wiring in one afternoon and pretty much it was working the next day with a little bit of help from Sabertooth or Dimension Engineering. So I raised a, a support ticket and they were able to help me out with, you know, which library to use and what's the best way of doing things. Uh, so, and as you can see, I've just created another board, which is based on the original PCB. And it is a very simple one. I still have all the MOSFETs and the pull down resistors or pull up pull down resistors for the four MOSFETs but um, I haven't installed the voltage regulator because this controller actually has a 5 volt output so I can just piggyback on that so that's going to provide a, uh, the power, power supply functionality and um, I mean I installed the sound or the amplifier board without any modification and I've 
while obviously not installed the motor driver board and I just use the the two inputs or outputs the IN1 and the IN2 and those are connected to the S1 and the S2 connections which are the serial connections on the Sabertooth controller so uh, um, yeah it, it was fairly easy to adapt this board and of course in the code I've I had to make quite a few modifications because instead of sending PWM signals on these outputs, now it is sending the serial data which is required for the controller. And of course, on the same serial data, I'm getting, getting back the, 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 uh, the information that I was talking about. So the voltage and all these amp and temperature readings. And that was it. So it was really just, I think, probably a couple of hours of work. So definitely the the transmitter is going to take more time than that, uh, especially considering that it also needs a, you know, a nice house and a case and, and well, that's going to be, you know, more hardware related activities to get that done. So um, hopefully you will be seeing some updates on this one as well. And of course, once I get the remote working, I'm going to retrofit that remote to also work with the, you know, the regular G scale sort of controller version and by the way this is not a separate software as well or not a separate a sketch I'm trying to incorporate both the let's say the G scale and the seven and a quarter gauge version into a same code so at the moment I'm just using some defines in the Arduino code so it knows which parts of the code to activate or deactivate and of course how to use these two outputs but uh, that seems to be working quite well for the time being and uh, well it is definitely coming along so that was just a quick update and thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video